For the last few years, one of the key discussions being had is climate change, the need to mitigate it, the risk attaching to it, the solution offered, a transition to cleaner energy. The development of new energy systems, such as coal generation, lower emissions, and a cheaper cost of production, what we're seeing is an evolution to a decentralized state. Decentralization, what is it? Is a question you may ask. Well, we prepared something short. Have a look. In a centralized system, the generation of electricity is concentrated in a few power stations. The centralized system has emerged as an alternative model to this traditional one. This new model brings generation close to consumers. The future development of electrical system will be based on the complementary of these models. Decentralized systems represent a new shift on how we generate and consume energy. New actors will emerge such as prosumers. Existing systems will adapt to new technologies, laws need to be restructured, and of course, new challenges comes with it. Tonight, we take a look at local energy decentralization and the challenges being faced on a local level. To find out, we sent our reporters onto the field. This is what they found. Take a look. We are in France where 70% of energy is coming from nuclear, and Nice is no different. However, Nice has an initiative by, by new municipality, which is supported by the European Commission. They are trying to increase the energy efficiency with smart, grids, smart meters, of course, with help from new uh, renewables. So let's ask people here what they think. Excuse me, sir. May I ask you a question? Yes, of course. Do you know what's decentralization of, of energy? What? Decentralization. You're in France. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, so whether to understand this, we need expert advice. So let's fly to Germany. While we fly to Germany to meet our energy experts, with the purpose of getting a better understanding of the challenges that could emerge from decentralized systems, let's remember our first question. What are the challenges arising from decentralization of energy? Here we are. Now, let's hear what they have to say. The challenge is to have more components, to combine more components, and to run these components very well working good together. Because a centralized system, you have mostly one big system running, producing, heating. We have two CHP, two gas oils, a power to heat plant. So we have at least, looking on the point of heating, five components instead of one. Um, you have to go different ways. Um, first, you have to talk to the Baroth, to the districts of Berlin and the public authorities there, and you have to convince them to say, okay, solar energy, is, solar systems are decentralized energy. At the end, it always depends on the people who are, who are working um, for the for the Baroth, because if you have one person there who is really open and um, really wants to make a change, uh, you, they can generate a change. And Municipalities uh, in, in France, for example, they, they have new rights in order to, to manage their, their, their energy uh, system on a local level and um, they, need to, they need to take over this new role and, and, and that also means that other people will have less say in, in how to manage the energy system. Um, and then on the, the private um, sector, um, I think it is also uh, the, the distribution system operators that are now in a new role. They see themselves as, as, as one of the main drivers of the energy transition because a lot of the energy uh, transition with regard to renewables happens in the local grid. So but they say it really needs to be clearly defined what, is, what needs to be done on a national level and what, what makes more sense to, to organize that on a, on a regional level. Um, so especially with regard to this um, more, 
more interdependencies that are uh, in place between the different sectors with regard to infrastructure generation and, and the different consumption on local area, I think the, the municipalities have a very, very important role to coordinate this uh, much better, the planning, the whole planning of this of this local energy system. Um, I think that needs to be done on a local level. I think the, the national level should support municipalities, municipalities in order to develop a successful model for this for this um, for this system for this regional system and then help others apply that so that not every municipality has to work on its own and start from zero because the I main problem is that there is no um, uh, regional market yet uh, uh, possible in, uh, in, in Germany uh, all of the legal stages on for the market they are all uh, working on bigger markets but not decentralized markets um, government should could be preparing the, the regulation, better regulation to a decentralized system and um, having partners offering components, smaller components. We don't for a decentralized system, as you could see, we don't need all the times big components. We sometimes also need small components. So the idea having small components Combining them is one of the main partnerships we are focused on. First of all, is institutional inertia. Uh, that's a bit challenging in the sense that uh, systems that have been used to manage centralized uh, plants, centralized uh, energy uh, infrastructures, may find it very hard to switch to a, to a different kind of configuration. The involvement of actors also is not the same, so when you are trying to decentralize you have to involve different actors with respect to when you are, when you are um, designing a centralized uh, apparatus. Uh, technically there's also um, issues, again, linked to the fact of the training um, is usually made on a centralized level, so people are used to think into centralized terms and centralized. One of the biggest challenges is to, um, to address the acceptance issue of the population. In a centralized system you have power plants maybe far away from homes and where people live and in a decentralized system um, you have windmills, you have photovoltaic and you have grids very close to the people and, um, and their, the area where they live. So it takes a lot of work to convince them to accept these changes. So it's about, it's about changes and um, getting people on board, getting them involved and also let them participate maybe economically um, in this change. Interesting opinions from different perspectives. Let's move to a second question. What are the conflicts as a result of decentralization of energy? We um, don't have the space to build big, um, yeah, big renewable energy parks. Like. So we have to use the rooftops um, of different buildings. Uh, the problem is, Senate, we only own a part of the houses, so we need to um, get the public involved. We need to have to get all the stakeholders involved, and there are different interests. And you have to it's like a cake, and everyone can get a piece yeah, of the true. cake. Uh, a lot of um, new issues and jobs and processes to be managed on a local level. Um, that means a lot of power is also shifted to other stakeholders, mm -hmm. both on the public sector but also on the private sector. And the, the grid uh, at the moment is not really um, equipped, very well equipped for that, uh, for these new amounts of energy that uh, is fed into their system. So um, they have to be re-equipped and modernized. Yes, difficult conflict. Now, third question. What are the roles to be played by local governments and other stakeholders in transition into decentralizing of energy? As an energy supplier, we are very responsible for the energy transition time because we are mainly partner to reach the CO2 targets in 2050. So we have to act to reach the CO2 targets. And um, it's about information first. Uh, you, you have to show them that they can save money in a lot of times. Uh, it's about creating awareness of um, what what is possible uh, in the city. Um, it's to push into poor. You have to push from above. Like uh, the senators, they have to say you have to do that. And um, <laughs> but on the other hand, you have to convince them. You have to get information, and you have to get the public involved. So Citizens should claim 
uh, to have a say in um, questions of energy, on the way that we want energy to be in, in, um, used in our communities set, once the political uh, regulations are set, then companies will either be obliged to, uh, say, to support that agenda, just to stay in business, or probably they will have to shift to different, uh, different domains. That's, that's my... It's really interesting how energy experts from different levels and sectors in the industry can have related opinions in the decentralization of energy. It is definitely a priority matter in the current energy system. Now, let's go back to the station. Thanks guys. Well, it appears local energy transition is not exactly on track. Just to recount the problems mentioned, we have multi-level governance where we have a push and pull situation. An identity crisis? Maybe. Who's in charge of what? What's the jurisdiction? When do you consult the other side? These are all issues that need to be updated. Great expansion. Great upgrading. These are two things that must be done to ensure connectivity, to ensure integration of new energy systems, a challenge that cannot be avoided. A key issue that was mentioned in the report is business models. It is important that in the evolution to a decentralized system that we also update our business models to incorporate all the challenges being faced in all other sectors, to also ensure that we move forward. These business models have to be integrated and inclusive of everyone, all stakeholders to allow full participation. Which leads me to the final point, the main issue, the one that is the biggest problem in all societies, social acceptance. We can go farther to say social acceptance and social participation. But the key problem here is, there has to be an integration of the people at a local level. Forums created, discussions to be had, full integration of the people into the transition, where they get to interact with all other stakeholders, be they companies or local authorities or just investors. This is a discussion that they must be a part of, not only for them to accept it, but for also to feel as if it is their own, for they are the ones who are served by this utility. In conclusion, two issues stand out the most. One, conflict. Two, identity of roles. It is important that everyone involved, and that is everyone, to understand that they all have a role to play, but more so how to play that role. The discussion must be had in identifying who's responsible for what, who's accountable for what. This will prevent an issue of conflict, and it will create an area that is conducive for accountability and transparency. Two issues that are very, very poignant to ensure democracy in decentralization of energy. It is important to understand energy decentralization has been there before. This was the first system that we employed on the discovery of electricity and the commercialization of electricity. The system worked very efficiently until it did not. Why? Because of the technology that was available at that time. Because of the distribution of population at that time. Now, in a not so industrialized system, we are moving back to a decentralized system. The efficiency and effectiveness of this transition to a decentralized system remains to be seen. What is key is to understand that roles must be identified, accountability must be there, transparency must be there to ensure an execution that is worthy of all the expenses of this procedure. Thank you for your time. Good night.